Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Uh, so today we're going to teach you how to build a media center using a Raspberry Pi. So the media center that we're going to use today and we're going to install on the Raspberry Pi via Raspbian is Kodi. So simply put, um, a media center is nothing but a culmination of different uh, programs added together. So in case of Kodi, uh, they have uh, in Kodi they have a lot of different variations with um, adding movies, videos, music, images, radio, games. So that entire culmination basically comprises to make a media center. So that is what our goal for today is. This is going to be a very straightforward, short, simple workshop. So I hope you can carry. Uh, you can ease into it and kind of get used to just how simple the entire instruction setup of this workshop is. So a, a small summary about the assembly. So we're a smart lab that has been based off of N5 and we've been operating since December of 2014. Over the past, 200, uh, over the past um, six years, I guess now, yes, uh, we've been conducting more than 250 free workshops. And um, our workshops comprises of three different categories. We have assembly hack, uh, which uh, which is an added uh, uh, culmination of embedded systems, IoT, hardware projects. Um, so something like this, where we're using Raspberry Pi, is considered as an assembly hack workshop. We have the assembly code workshop. Uh, where we show off projects that include a lot of different APIs, frameworks, applications, AR, VR projects, gaming projects, and different software projects in general. And then we have assembly data science, which is basically uh, anything associated with data science, such as uh, AI or machine learning. Uh, our target audiences are um, students, professionals, and entrepreneurs. But the uh, workshops are always open to anyone who's interested in them. Uh, our focus is on smart technology and practical applications, such as this workshop, where uh, we're going to show you how to build a media center using a Raspberry Pi. So practically speaking, it's it's a very simple application, but it's a very practical application as well, since you don't have to set up a media server on either your uh, phone or your laptop or your smart TV. You can, you can use just the Raspberry Pi as an outlet itself. And if you want to uh, follow up on all the information regarding the workshops, you can go to our forum, which is members.theassembly.ae. Uh, you can also tag us on social media. Our Facebook handle is The Assembly, and uh, our Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube are at Make Smart Things. So a short overview of what we're gonna be doing today. So the purpose of this workshop, as I said, was to build a media uh, media center using uh, with a Raspberry um, on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so we're gonna just go through some simple setup. Um, uh, I'm I'm gonna show you how to set up a net uh, your Netflix account on a Raspberry Pi, and if 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 you set if you learn how to set up a, a, a Netflix application on uh, um, using Kodi on a Pi, you can easily download a lot of different applications, applicates, um, a lot of different variations of those kind of applications. Um, so yeah, you can watch, again, you can watch TV shows, you can watch, uh, you can watch uh, live TV, um, you can watch movies, um, you can listen to songs, radios, play games. So the, the application is very widely available with, uh, with Kodi. Um, of course, I'm going to discuss about what the Pi is, how it works, what it looks like, uh, how we'll, uh, you know, how we'll be using today. We'll be used as a media server. We're going to show you how to transfer files from your PC or mobile to a Pi. So, uh, in this case, I'll show you how to do it from your phone. So it'll be much more easier in case you either want to transfer down downloadable files that are on your mobile to the Pi. Uh, so I'll show you that way. Similarly, if it's uh, since you can do it from the phone to the Pi, you can do it vice versa as well. Um, but I'm just gonna for today. I'm just gonna show you how to do it from your phone to the Pi. Uh, we're gonna also use a phone as a remote. So there's an application uh, that comes with uh, Kodi. Um, uh, that 
that you can install on your Android phones or your iOS phones, which you can where you can use the um, use that application as a remote control to trigger, um, you know, the up, down, left, right, select keys, uh, so that you can manipulate it on the uh, manipulate Kodi on Pi. Uh, also, I'm going to discuss about why we use uh, we chose Raspbian as the operating system for this workshop and uh, other applications as to why Raspbian was chosen. So a small history, let's just say a small introduction to the Raspberry Pi. So a Raspberry Pi is a series of small computers developed to promote programming. As you know, the Raspberry Pi is very programmer friendly and it is it is also very uh, student friendly. So you can, you can easily introduce yourself to um, IoT applications and uh, you can also do a lot of different uh, computer vision projects as well on, uh, on a Raspberry Pi. So as you can see, uh, you have some pins of you have 40 GPIO pins that are on the outskirts of the Pi, sorry, uh, which you can use to connect components, sensors, all these different kind of components. You have uh, four um, USB ports which you can use to connect any sort of USB peripherals devices. You have an Ethernet port which you can use to connect uh, an Ethernet cable to to give direct access to your internet. Um, to the Pi. Uh, you have an HDMI port which you can use an, as an HDMI out in case you want to view what's on your Pi. In this case you'll have your HDMI connected, one end of the HDMI connected to the Pi and the other end of the HDMI connected to a screen. Uh, you also have an aux port so in case you want to connect a headphone so you just connect the headphone jack into the aux port and you can listen to it. Uh, there's a small silver port which is used for power. So um, for the Raspberry Pi to function, you have to uh, provide a um, um, a micro USB cable connection from any sort of power supply to the Pi so that it helps regulate the power on the board. Um, also, you have two ports, one for uh, if you want to attach a, an external display to the Pi and the other one in case you want to attach a camera but in our case we won't be doing much of that today we'll just be using the hdmi ports and if you if you happen to have a mouse and keyboard on hand that will also be a good thing because we will be using that um we won't be doing a lot of programming in this uh in this workshop because uh, a lot of what is there to do is set up and i'm going to show you gradually how you set up all these different processes to enable Kodi on Raspberry Pi. So yeah, the operating system that we're going to use is Raspbian. Um, so if you want, you can use the link that's given right over here to install Raspbian, or you can go to the Raspberry Pi website and download it from there. I'll, I'll go through the entire installation process so you can see how it's done as well. This is like a good leeway into how you can introduce yourself to Raspberry Pi and how you can do uh, projects on Raspberry Pi, yes. Uh, so the equipment required, yes, so we'll be using a Raspberry Pi, any Raspberry Pi of your choice. Uh, just make sure that it has an HDMI output. To my knowledge, most of them do. Um, uh, you'll be using a micro SD card, preferably anything more than 16 GB since um, uh, since Kodi does take a bit of space. And if you want to use your uh, Pi as a media center, it's always good to have a storage more than at least 16 GB. Um, uh, any sort of a micro USB cable for your power supply as a power supply, um, a USB keyboard and mouse because the setup will require you to navigate. So you'll need a USB, uh, you'll need a mouse or keyboard and you can use the peripherals that are on the Pi itself to connect those keyboard and mouse, the keyboard and mouse, um, then the HDMI cable and, uh, or if you want a Wi-Fi connection, if you have a Raspberry Pi 2 or below, you'll need a dongle, a, a Wi-Fi dongle or a Wi-Fi connector. Um, or you can straight up connect it to the Ethernet cord. Um, or if you have a Raspberry Pi that is above 3, 3B three plus, 4, so on, uh, which comes in with uh, inbuilt Wi-Fi. Uh, module uh, you don't have you don't need um, an ethernet cord or an external dongle to 
connect to Wi-Fi. So it'll be good if you have anything above Raspberry Pi 3. So the reason why we use Raspbian, um, so uh, initially you can use, you can install Kodi separately just as an operating system for uh, the Raspberry Pi. You don't have to go through the whole loop of doing it with Raspbian. But the great advantage of using it with Raspbian is if you have a network connection that requires you to sign in or log in, you won't be able to do that properly with, uh, uh, with Kodi. Um, by login, I mean if there is a redirect page that your uh, that goes to in case you want to sign into your Wi-Fi. Um, also, if you want to install any other sort of applications such as RetroPy, RetroPy that I have given here as an example, uh, which is usually used for retro gaming, so you can install different emulators, like Game Boy Advance, and so on. Um, it's also good since Raspbian is an operating system where you can have a bunch of different applications running as well so it's better to use raspbian in general because it's more friendly and you don't <clears throat> you get a chance to play around with different applications as well you're not stuck with kodi if you're going to be installing any sort of operating system all right let's get started here's the link that i showed you in the presentation link to install raspbian let's go down so as you can see, there are a, three different uh, variations of it. We're going to install the one with the desktop and the recommended software that will be installed. So the installation is going to take a bit of time. So what I'll do is I'll speed up the installation process and I'll be back. All right, let's check the zip file if it's been installed. All right, so that's the image right there. We're gonna use Belena Etcher. So Belena Etcher is the um, software that we use to etch or to mount the image onto an SD card. So for your Raspberry Pi, usually the operating system is stored in the SD card. Uh, if you want to install Belen Etcher, you can go to belenetcher.io.etcher and you can see that there is installations for Windows, Mac and so on. Belen Etcher comes really useful when it comes to um, uh, to mount images. So it's just a burn burner in a way, I guess. If 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 you're familiar with burning um, uh, images into a disk, it's similar to doing it on an SD card, where it's readable once it's on the Pi. All right, so. So we're going to select the image, make sure you know where the location of the image is. Right there. Right here. I'll take some time. So First thing we needed to do was to unzip the zip folder since the image is stored in the zip folder. We'll do that. Since we did that, now we're going to just select the image. Make sure you select the SD card that you have written. Um, uh, so if your, your monitor could have more than one SD, SD card slot, so you just make sure that um, uh, that you select the right one. Sometimes it'll, it'll capture even the USB ports, so just be careful. Um, with the SD cards, you'll get, uh, there are multiple ways to uh, format it as well. So the best practice would usually be to format the SD card first. Um, so there are different softwares for that. Um, I, I usually use Disk Imager, Windows 32 Disk Imager to, um, to format an SD card if it already has an image in it or some other content that I want to remove. You can even do it the old fashioned way where you can um, format it uh, when you go to the my computer side of things, I guess. So we'll just wait for this to flash. Right now the image is flashing. And a lot of this workshop is just the waiting game, the installation process. So I'll be back after this.
Now that your um, image has been mounted or burned onto the SD card, you can remove the SD card from the SD card slot, take the mini SD card and put it inside the Raspberry Pi. Um, to uh, to start the Raspberry Pi, to enable the Raspberry Pi, you'll have to connect, as I mentioned before, a micro USB cable. So you can either connect it from one of the U you can either connect one of the sides to the USB ports of your laptop, or if you have a power bank or a small power adapter that you can use. I think most of them usually take up to um, 1.5 amps or 2 amps with 5 volt power supply to operate. So you can definitely use that and also make sure that you have your keyboard and mouse connected so if you have a wireless one that's good if you have a wired one make sure that you're as close as possible to the raspberry pi since the raspberry pi will also be connected to the uh, monitor as well so make sure that your hdmi is there so you've connected to the monitor your keyboard, keyboard and mouse is set up your micro USB cable is set up to power it up and your SD card for the operating system. Okay, so now the Raspberry Pi has been connected to power. We're just seeing it run. Has to resize the file system sometimes if your SD card is um, 16 GB. What tends to happen is that the file system is shrunk to 8 GB. So, um, so once it goes through the loop of starting up, it loops again and then starts in again because the file system has been shrunk. Okay. All right. So as you can see, if you've installed the right image, the right version of the image, you'll get something that is very similar to my desktop. You can set up your set country, language, time zone. If you want to set up a password, you can do that too. Uh, if you can set up a screen as well. Set up the network. I'll do that for myself. Right, FFTech, next. Now this can take up to a few minutes. Uh, depending upon the connection. This is just to enable that your software is up to date. Sometimes um, uh, you might have, act could happen that sometimes you accidentally uh, installed a, an older version. So what tends to happen is that it'll uh, once you set it up, it'll initially do a an update. Um, and if there's any packages that are that were pre-installed while installing the image um, they'll be updated as well okay and it looks like it's going to download some of the updates All right, looks like the system's updated. We're not gonna start it right now. So first things first, we're gonna go to the terminal. And just in case you are, just in case you are using the, um, uh, an existing version of um, Raspbian that you already had, just run these two commands, sudo apt-get update UVD. Yep, first we're just going to check for updates. Since our system is fairly new, uh, all the updates are up, should be up to date. All right, and then sudo apt-get upgrade. All right. Next thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to clear this window and start from a clearer terminal. And now we're going to just call, uh, <clears throat> now we're going to install some of Kodi's packages and Kodi itself. So first is Kodi, 
then the packages which is Kodi peripheral joystick then Kodi PVR IPTV hyphen simple Kodi hyphen input input hyphen adaptive Kodi hyphen input stream hyphen RTMP <clears throat> All right, so these are some of the important packages that Kodi needs to run properly on a Raspbian based operating system. So just gonna let that run. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. Some of the ones, uh, some of the uh, packages that we're looking into would be the Kodi peripheral joystick, which allows you to use an external joystick. Um, rest all of the uh, ones that uh, that uh, state input stream. That's usually just for a consistent stream of data, just in case um, you're playing a video and it hangs. There's a lot of um, issues with um, uh, rendering in on the Raspberry Pi since everything is done everything is preferably supposed to happen on the hardware side but uh, because we're compensating by using uh, software to um, help encode information uh, some these packages come really in handy when we're dealing with installing Kodi onto a system like a Raspberry Pi which is usually on the lower end side of things Okay, just processing a few libraries. All right. <sighs> Next, we're gonna install some Python packages. Now, these packages are necessary so that we can install Netflix properly onto um, <clears throat> Kodi. So, first thing, sudo apt-get install build essentials. Those are all essential tools that come with Python. Um, <clears throat> Then Python, then we are installing pip, the package manager for Python, then Python dev, then lib ffi dev, lib ssl hyphen dev. and lib nss3 I think I missed something all right most of these packages seem to be here I think um, most of the Python packages will be there at least the pip ones um, those that come built in with the operating system Right, just a few, just the last bit <clears throat> of packages that we need. Uh, now, these packages that we're using requires pip to be installed. That's why we installed pip in the previous part. So, sudo pip install setup tools, wheel, pycryptodemix, mix. All right. Most of these packages are just there to enable Kodi from working properly. <clears throat> enable Kodi to work properly. 
and as I said, um, this workshop is more installation heavy than content heavy. It's very easy to set up uh, with Kodi. Uh, if you follow these steps, everything is laid out right there, pretty straightforward. All right. After we're done installing this, we'll finally install the plugin for um, uh, Netflix to work on Kodi itself. Uh, the plugin itself is a repository, uh, a GitHub repository, um, which has the uh, zip file in it. So the plugin is zipped inside a file, and that file is what we're going to be retrieving. And once we open up Kodi, uh, we're going to be um, in putting that file into an add-on file where all the add-ons are. I, I'll go more into detail as we go along with that. So once code is installed, it would be usually under um, um, audio, I think. Yeah. All right. This might take some time. Okay, let's clear this. Now we're finally gonna retrieve the uh, package needed to install um, Netflix onto Kodi. Yes, yes, Not slash repository <coughs> dot castignate slash raw slash master slash repository dot cast .zip. So this is a zip file that we'll be extracting from that repository and this is going to be stored in my HomePy folder which is like the default folder that will be opened up front as you can see it says connected that means 
the folder has been installed and you can find it in uh, whichever um, um, directory you've saved it in. If you haven't added a specific dire directory, it'll be saved in the home by directory. Alright. Alright, looks like I had some issues with w get the previous command that I wrote. So I'm just gonna git clone the entire repository instead. Since the zip file is inside the repository itself, so instead of getting the specific zip file separately, I'll just git clone the repository. Okay, now that we have our zip file installed properly, let's go and start Kodi. So, sound and video and Kodi right here. It will take a few moments to start up. So, we have the recent version of Kodi. Now we're gonna just set up a few things to enable us to add or install Netflix onto Kodi. So go to system. Now you can see there are a lot of different settings that you can do. We'll be going through another set of settings after this. So system. You can see we have audio input internet access power saving add-ons so we'll just navigate towards add-ons and then just check unknown sources so that we're basically given a chance to install things outside of Kodi since our, our repository for installing Netflix is a zip file that's not currently in Kodi, we need to enable that. So we go to add-ons, we first will you need to install the zip file. So just go and locate where your zip file is. For me, it's under repository.castingnate. Yep, and that's where my zip file is located. Next, I'm gonna install from the repository. You can see I have casting.imp repository just added. If I go under my repository and all, you can see a list of all the repositories that are available, and that's the repository that I installed, uh, that I um, inputted right now. So if you want, you can uninstall it, you can disable it. So there are many different options that you have with this, just in case you want to remove something. So we'll go to add ons. You can see you have different options for different uh, things. You have for games, video, etc. Go to all. So first we need to add the repository, add the Netflix repository that we um, need to install. So again, Castanet repository has been inputted. We go back. We go to, where's the option? I think it's under settings, add-ons, go back, okay, back again, yes, so we need to install from repository, repository name, video add-on, and then we install Netflix. You see right there, that should show up for you once you've inputted the um, so there's an option for install right there just click it pick the recent version 
That's the most stable version, I think, at the moment. These are some additional libraries that will be installed as you install them. Okay, it seems like there's a problem. Let's fix that. All right, looks like, yeah, it's installing. Just had to click on it again. Sometimes if it doesn't work, just reboot Coordy again and it'll start working. So yeah, as it says, Netflix add-on has been installed with those added libraries. All right. Now let's go back and see if this works. Go back. Let's go back. My add-ons. Yeah. Sometimes there's a bit of an issue with the clicks. Alright, my add-ons. All. Let's go down to see if Netflix been installed. Yes, as you can see, there's a tick mark right there. Now we're going to open Netflix. Okay, I might skip this part. All right, I've signed in. Buffering takes a bit of time, depending upon your Wi-Fi connection. Okay. All right. Yeah, it'll still need to install. It's just weird because we've installed input stream dot adaptive. I think. Oh, it says it's not enabled, so we need to just enable it. Yes. All right. So you can see I have access to all these different shows, all movies, kinds. Let's just check one in random if it just opens up the categories, subcategories. I don't think I'll be able to play anything for you guys. Again, buffering takes a bit of time. Let's just throw something random. One. So you see, I have access to all these different episodes. Again, yeah. Um, right, yeah, let's install that too. now yep accept this will take up some space and it'll take some time to install right All right, looks like there is a problem with this particular episode. It's not logging in. But I can assure you that it works. I've tested it out before. So what you guys can do is try it out yourselves. And if you come across any problems, just mention it down on the comment section. Um, so next thing that we're going to do is uh, we just have a bit more left. We have... Um, I'm going to show you how to transfer files from uh, one Kodi device to another. So for, in this case, I'm going to show you how you can uh, send files from your phone or your laptop. In my case, I'm using a phone to um, the, the Kodi that is set up as a media center for my, with my Raspberry Pi on my Raspberry Pi. Um, and the last bit would be how to control it if you want to remove the use of a mouse and keyboard 
what other way you can use um, what other thing that you can use is an app that I'm going to show you that you can install on your Android device or your iPhone to help you enable um, a navigation uh, so you'll have your standard up down left right keys and so on uh, so that you can easily navigate through the app without the use of a mouse or keyboard all right so let's get started with um, how to transfer files from one coding device to another so the first thing that you have to make sure is that your raspberry pi has ssh enabled so we go to interfaces ssh enabled press ok you have other options here too but we will just be using ssh in our case we'll enable that and okay right i'll take some time uh, best bet would be to restart it just to make sure that the ssh sticks but in my case um i'm not going to do that because i'm pretty much sure the ssh stays but it's just to ensure that it for sure that the next time you um open the pi uh, ssh will be activated for good so now we go to settings We'll go to systems. Right. Services, my bad. And we're going to just un uh, check this option. So UPnP, that's the communication that we're going to use to communicate between the two Kodi systems. So we're going to enable UPnP system support. I'm going to share libraries in case you want to share libraries you can um, enable share my library i am um, best bet would be to enable look for remote as well just in case and next thing that we're going to enable is we're going to go to control and we're going to allow remote control via http This is basically help us um, create a web server so it's actually accessible the uh, the exchange the exchange of packages are actually accessible just gonna check that and that's it from this side all right I've got Kodi set up on my phone um, Make sure that the changes that we made in the uh, settings um, uh, on the Pi uh, side of Kodi, we do the same thing on the phone itself. So you enable HTTPS and NPNP, UPNP. Um, and so first thing I'm going to show you is how you can import uh, files such as music files or video files that are on your phone and import them onto Kodi. So we go to, for example, if you want to do music, just go to music. We're going to go to files, add music. We're going to browse, um, external source. We're just going to add whatever file you have. So you basically have to add a directory. That's going to add, so this is a particular thing I have imported. This is a song that's on my phone. If you go back, you see this is added to the library of Kodi itself. So it's accessible right on the front page. So that'll be there for your videos and everything else as well. And we go to services just to make sure we enable UPnP. And the HTTP request. Now we're back on the Pi and we're gonna start sending things from my phone to the Pi. So first we're going to go to music since we want to capture the music that I'm sending from my phone. Add and UPnP device. Now uh, as you can see it says Kodi and a specific IP address. That's the that's my phone. Uh, that's uh, that's the connection between my phone and my uh, uh, and the Pi. I'm going to go to the music library and then I'm going to search under anything pick up any of the directories because all of the directories have the same file add it now if you see samsung already has it's been there 
make sure to uh, install this particular um, uh, track or music track so that you have it on your system because if you don't install it what tends to happen is that when the connection is broken um, the connection is broken you won't be able to access it again so you just have to do the whole system, whole thing again all right for the final part what we're going to do is i'm going to show you how to install um, how to set up the remote control system from your phone to access it um, access your kodi that's set up on your raspberry pi remotely so the app that you're going to install is called core k o r e and uh, what it does is basically it has these keys um, it has four keys there's a center key for selecting something then you have back keys you have the home button um, if you want to go back home and then there are other shortcuts there as well so if you want to watch something if you want to play music if you want to um, if you want to what if you want to check out pictures and if you want to switch it off so you have options for all of those and that it's a very easy way to um, it's a very easy way to set up or uh, control your um, uh, Kodi remote system through uh, the app right so now I'm just gonna navigate through this as you can see I'm just going I have uh, installed a um, I've downloaded a song in this one you can see I'm trying to access it go and browse home folder it's under music select there's a bit of a lag as you can see okay yes we want to save it to the source if you go to music play select you see that it actually shows you an updated notification as well that the particular song that you're playing is called this and whatever update it shows here basically is that all right so that is the end of the workshop for today i hope um, i was able to clarify how easy it is to set up a multimedia system with a raspberry pi something like kodi and you again you don't have to subject yourself to kodi there are other options out there as well like plex for example uh, so you can definitely test out a few different things and see what works the best for you. All right. Thank you so much.